All right, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I wanted to do a video today about uh, getting started with Ottoman Wargaming. This can be a really hard topic to get information on in English, uh, and it can be kind of uh, hard to find reliable uh, sources, secondary sources in English, and a lot of what I've seen at least tends to generalize or relies on sort of uh, outdated scholarship from like the 19th century, um, which isn't to bash the guys that started Oriental studies in the 19th century, um, but they're just dealing with sort of a limited base of sources. So um, I was originally going to do this like a PowerPoint, but I figure I might as well just show the miniatures and explain it as I go along. So we'll start over here with the cavalry, since the cavalry were uh, in the 15th century your mainstay of the Ottoman army. Um, so if you hadn't seen the tour video, I'll just go ahead and explain these guys again. Uh, these are these are the uh, Spahi, or just the cavalry, um, and you'll have two types of cavalry in Ottoman army. So the way these guys uh, these are from Assault Group, and they're the Spahi of the Port set, Porte, I should say, um, which are the regimental, like the household royal cavalry, essentially, for the Sultan. And um, they're permanent, permanently, uh, permanent troops, yeah, that's the, stumbling over my words there for a minute, sorry about that. Uh, and they're uh, salaried, um, and they tend to be a little more armored than maybe the feudal Spahi, uh, but it was pretty freeform in terms of what they wore and what they carried. So, um, but they did a note on their armament. So, uh, some Ottoman models have more uh, pistols, and um, this is one of the issues with trying to wargame the Ottomans. Is like a lot of the information is sort of general and doesn't reflect the changes in the army uh, that happen over time. So if you have uh, a Spahi army that's trying to represent um, like the 15th century to um, like the late um, mid to mid 17th century, you're not going to see very many pistols. Um, but I mean, I'm sure they existed, just not many. And um, like this unit here, it's sculpted with mostly swords, a few lances, and one guy has a pistol. Uh, so maybe he got that off of a dead Austrian or Hungarian. Um, and in an earlier Ottoman army, well, gen really all Ottoman armies up to the late 16th century and 17th century, uh, you're going to want a lot of cavalry. So... Um, it's not really well reflected, well reflected in my collection, but um, you'll probably want like three to one cavalry to infantry, uh, depending on the campaign, of course. Um, in the East, I was actually just reading something, um, an, an account the other day, uh, there was less uh, cavalry that they took within the fight in Persia um, in one particular campaign, but uh, on the Western Theater, you're going to want a lot of cavalry. So you're going to, the, the standing cavalry was organized into six regiments, uh, and those generally all went to war. And then there was sort of a semi-ceremonial, uh, unit called the Kapakulu, uh, and, uh, they were like kind of the centerpiece. Uh, but again, more of a ceremonial unit in some ways, especially as time goes on. And then the other type of Spahi you will want are the, called the Timariat Spahi, um, which is essentially, uh, not to explain that, it's kind of complicated, but uh, essentially a semi-feudal type of cavalry. Um, so they might be, you know, not as heavily armored, uh, and, you know, like I have these guys all uniformly dressed, which is a little anachronistic, but, I mean, I do that mostly for gaming purposes. Uh, but, you know, your feudal provincial Spahi are going to have slightly less or no uniformity. Uh, so they would take themselves, the the, uh, the feudal 
sort of landholder uh, would take himself plus like a retinue. Uh, and that could a number upwards of 100,000 troops. Uh, so quite substantial numbers for your cavalry. Um, but here I have this sort of represent the late 16th century, so there's more infantry. Um, but as I continue this project, I'll probably add several more units of um, cavalry. Uh, there's another type of cavalry that they had called the Akunja. Uh, and these were, uh, typically they were Turkmen, uh, Turkish tribes that settled in Ottoman in the Ottoman Empire, uh, and then they spread out further. Uh, so they uh, were, or they could join this sort of Akinja Corps that their main mission was raiding into into the West primarily, um, and a lot of these Turkmen settled in the Balkans in the 15th and early 16th century. Uh, and then in later 17th century Ottoman forces, you'll get um, mounted uh, Tufekci, which were essentially peasant uh, infantrymen, uh, but a lot of them also fought mounted. So that's another option. Um, so like I said, the, the army is going to change over time, and it really depends which particular uh, campaign and um, sort of uh, era of the Ottoman military you're looking at. Um, so the next cavalry that I have uh, are the Tatars, and so the Tatars were a big auxiliary for the Ottomans. Uh, vassal state in the Crimea, uh, they did a lot of slaving, and uh, they were a huge manpower pool for the Empire and campaign, so I have a host of them here. Uh, and Pike and Shot, the way their army list is written, and they're not the best troops. Um, but in terms of historical accuracy, this is, depending on the campaign, um, you know, they were fairly present in most of them. Uh, and they also did uh, uh, off-season, like, raiding-type missions, similar to the Akinja. Uh, but the Akinja were killed in 1595 in a pretty devastating incident. Uh, so, uh, Tatars, like I said, a mainstay, and uh, also a big presence at the famous 1683 Battle of Vienna. Um, and then we'll go do artillery real quickly. Um, I mostly have, this is a European artillery crew, uh, but I have them included because the Ottomans did contract some uh, European crewmen or local uh, sort of Balkan or even Western European mercenaries to operate artillery guns. Uh, so I have them included here. Um, and we'll get to these guys in just a second. And then I have, um, like I showed in the other video, this is to represent the Ottoman, like the state artillery corps. Um, and typically they would either be part of the campaign or they would um, be part of the uh, garrison in one of the fortresses, especially on the Western Front. Um, and uh, we'll shift to the infantry now. So these guys are from Warfare Miniatures. They're the uh, Sekban. Uh, and this was the really dominant uh, infantry force. Uh, they got their start in the late 16th century um, because of a number of issues that we aren't relevant to this, but uh, they are a uh, peasant mercenary sort of force. So you're going to see a lot of the, you're going to want a lot of these guys in an army from um, like the late 16th century to uh, the 17th century, especially in the 17th century where they start to actually outnumber the Janissaries on campaign. So, um, you know, musketeers, uh, nothing too special. Probably should give these guys some kind of commander. But um, I still have to research sort of what their battlefield uh, organization was. Um, but I have them set up on like a pretty standard gun line. Uh, and then commanders. So um, this is Janissary Officer. And we've got another Janissary Officer here mounted. 
and then um, we have an Ottoman commander. Uh, so more than likely, after Suleiman's death, and barring a couple notable exceptions, um, the commander of an Ottoman army is going to be the Grand Vizier, or a, a favored sort of Pasha. Um, and then for a large army, the individual wings of the army, they were usually drawn up by region, so um, Rumelia, which is like Greece and the Balkans, Syria, uh, Egypt, that sort of thing. Um, and then they would have been, those individual army wings would have been commanded by a particular officer. So, like, this is a, one example, a possible example. Um, and I have another one here. And then, um, probably the most famous Ottoman force, last but not least, is uh, the Janissaries. So I've got, um... The big musket unit. I still have actually one more base to do on this unit, and then uh, two smaller gun lines here, and then we've got some uh, close close combat hand weapon armed janissaries. Uh, these would probably be a little uh, not quite a good fit for the uh, late 16th century army. I'm I'm trying to build with this. Um, but you would have had Janissaries like this for, um, like early 16th century, so like Mohawks period, definitely Reign of Suleiman. Um, and then you also had them, uh, in sieges where they would be, uh, like the assaulting sort of troops to get close in. Uh, but, uh, the bigger point with your infantry, so depending on the period of, uh, Ottoman army you're representing, you're gonna want, um, earlier... Well, it sort of peaks, so uh, like Mohawks to Suleiman's death in the mid, uh, when did Suleiman die? 1550, no, 1566 at the Siege of Sigetfar. So you'll have um, probably quite a few Janissaries, um, but they're still an elite. Uh, but then you'll also have a lot of uh, peasant uh, Azabs, that was the word used for them at that time. Uh, and you'll want uh, a mix of those, but maybe slightly more Azabs, but your Janissaries are going to be your main gun line, uh, main infantry, and they were uh, trench fighters mostly. Uh, they would take cover in trenches and then assault. Um, and, uh, you know, it's because, especially in the West, most of your fighting is sieges. Um, so, but late... At the end of the 16th century, and then um, by definitely by the 17th century, mid 17th century, you're going to want a lot more guys like this. So these sec bonds, um, and like I said, it's the main thing is the ratio. So um, you know, like Siege of Vienna era and before that, um, going to want a lot more guys like this, and then slightly less less Janissaries, because what happens is, um, late 16th century, because there are two big Ottoman wars at that time, uh, their numbers peak, uh, the Janissary Corps numbers peak, um, and then, so what they do, because that's really expensive, uh, so what they do instead is the regional governors start recruiting, uh, armies of these guys, uh, to make up the sort of manpower needs. Uh, so... Like I said, um, you know, just wanted to give this as an intro video. Uh, sorry for the shaky camera. Um, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I can help you uh, as best I can. Um, and if you didn't see the tour video, this is a mix of um, Assault Group and Warlord and then... Uh, the Sekbon or Warfare Miniatures USA. They make a lot of great stuff for late uh, late 17th century. Um, this is war, uh, Assault Group. Uh, assault Group. Uh, and then we've got uh, Warlord uh, and Warlord. Janissary Officers of Warlord. And then I've got, this is from the Assault Group, and I've actually got another Ottoman officer and then like their sort of staff guy 
that I still have to paint. Um, but anyway, uh, and then in terms of building an Ottoman army practically, I would recommend going to the assault group and getting the um, Janissary Regiment Builder. That's what this is. So you get five. So you're going to get, uh, as I was saying, you're going to get five uh, stands of infantry. Um, well, I mean, the way I have them based, it comes out to five. Uh, and then you get a command. Um, this unit needs a flag badly. I know that. And I uh, apologize for my poor painting skills. Uh, and that guy's hand is missing. Um, need to give give these guys like some like a dark, nice dark wash. Anyway, uh, so I recommend that to to start with like a uh, unit. Um, now, Warlord does makes a couple Janissary unit packs um, that are like them firing or advancing uh, that are uh, decent. I mean, I like their Janissary models. Um, but they're made on demand, but Assault Group is pretty good about having a lot of Ottomans in stock most of the time. Um, these are the, what I wouldn't recommend is getting the Warlord uh, Ottoman Janissary box set, um, and not because there's anything wrong with the figures themselves. Um, they're pretty, I like them, and, and they mix well with the Assault Group. Um, it's just that uh, you get... So in that box set, you get like the three stands shooting and the three stands um, assaulting with hand weapons, and um, not really a fan of that. Uh, I think they should really just do a box that's two sets of them firing, or like a set of them firing and like uh, advancing, because um, the reality is past uh, like the 16th century early 16th century, most of your Janissaries, except for um, siege circumstances. Uh, and even then, most of them are going to be musketeers uh, firing in line. So, um, again, nothing wrong with the miniatures, just in terms of, like, practically building it. Um, and then, you know, you're going to need some command. So, um, I mean, I like the Warlord Janissary officers. Those aren't, they're not bad. They're pretty nice. I like them. Um, but then you also should want the, you know, a couple like generic commanders like this um, that, you know, you can use to represent just like a, a Grand Vizier or uh, Ottoman Sultan, um, like Suleiman or something. And then Tatars, uh, these are Assault Group, and I think uh, Old Glory makes some 25 millimeter Tatars if I'm not mistaken, um, but I'm not going to show all these. I did that. You can, I did a little more detailed one on the tour. Um, and the cavalry, uh, you know, like I said, you're going to want, depending on the period you're playing, um, you know, you're going to want uh, a different ratio and, you know, you might want to do buy particular figures to differentiate, like, your Spahi of the port versus your feudal um, Tamari Spahi. Uh, and then artillery. I mean, the, the artillery guns I have are kind of like heavy, heavy but mobile infantry guns. Um, Old Glory makes some really nice uh, Ottoman uh, siege guns, and uh, they're done, well, siege guns in general, and you can buy the crew. Um, and they're done in the style that was pretty common for the Ottoman really heavy guns. Um, they had a variety of different cannon, but you're going to want, um, and I'll probably want that too. Uh, but again, it depends what era and what campaign you're trying to represent. Um, you're going to want, you know, normal artillery like you would in uh, an army, European army of the period, um, you know, 30 years war, or like wars of religion. Uh, but then Ottomans are really crazy about artillery. So you're going to want guns like this, plus those really heavy siege guns that have, um, they're not on a, uh, on a frame with wheels like this, a, uh, limber. I think that's the term. Uh, they're just in a wooden, um, frame and they were set like into the ground. So, and they were much bigger, uh, and used to pound fortress walls. So, 
Um, you know, uh, just to wrap up, because this video's gone on quite a long time, um, you know, my Ottoman army is certainly not complete by any means, but um, I hope this just gave a good introduction. Uh, this can be kind of a hard topic to get into, or like if you you have like maybe a European 30 Years War army or Wars of Religion army and you kind of want to do some Ottoman campaigns, but you're not sure where to start, I hope this was um, helpful. And uh, like I said, be happy to answer any questions in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching.